Ladies and gentlemen, I need to preface this video before I even get started because I know I'm going to say some things that are not going to sit well with a bunch of people's sensibilities, especially for those who are sensitive about the things that I say about the city of Chicago. I get it, totally understand, but I still feel the need to say what I need to say because it's important, especially for the children who continue to lose their lives. So if you cannot handle my content, then I understand if you need to exit, but I am going to say some things that are not going to sit well with a lot of your sensibilities, okay? Chicago has been a war zone for a long time, even to the point to where it almost looks like it's like not even real, okay? Where they have a website. They have a website that is dedicated to all of the shootings and murders that are going on in Chicago. And I have never heard of such an asinine thing before. I don't know if y'all even heard of that. What's the name of that site? Um, mm, I forget the name of it. I'll have to look it up again at some point. But I think it's probably one of the most ridiculous things. And the cold part about it is that when we chant this chant, when we say Black Lives Matter, and all of that good stuff. It's funny how if we say that terminology, and I know that it means something specific, but just the words itself, I think, are very hypocritical. Because I think that if black lives matter, then all black lives should matter. Can we agree to that? So if we're going to agree to that, and you guys will say, yes, we agree. Okay, if we're going to say black lives matter, then all black lives should matter. Yes? Not let's pick and choose. Only the black lives that matter are the ones who are gunned down by the police. Because I'm sure that's not the message that people want to put out there. Okay? So if that's the case, then why is it that all of the violence, damn near all of it, involves people that look just like us, the lives who are being taken are our babies, and the people who are taking these babies' lives look just like them. That in itself is hypocritical and it's dumb. And I'm going to tell you guys, I thought that this number, you know what? I can't even say that I thought this number wasn't real because I've seen the number of, of shootings that have happened in Chicago. You know, three, four, five hundred people shot, a thousand, twelve, thirteen hundred people shot. Like, what? There is no, oh, yeah. Uh, HeyJackass.com. I'm not using that word, but that's actually the name of the website. So thank you, Jimmy D. There is actually a Chicago violence website. That's the name of it. So you guys can actually look that up. But the headline says that there was a girl who was seven years old that was killed. Her sister was wounded and over 40 other people were injured during a weekend in Chicago. During one weekend, even in some violent areas, I think that number would be really high if that were the number for the entire year. That's the number for one freaking weekend. One. Not even a holiday weekend. Yes? I don't understand. <laughs> And you know what's funny is I actually had somebody in my comment section, I can't remember the name of the individual, but came in and said, not every area in Chicago is like that. It's only certain neighborhoods that are really bad. And I said to myself, I can't believe that this individual just said what they just said. Did they, did they really just say to me, it's not every area in Chicago, let alone the fact that I never said all of Chicago, huh? But on top of that, the fact that you have to clarify it's not the entire city, I think shows that that's a problem in itself. Because I don't give a damn if it was one neighborhood or one in a hundred neighborhoods or 1,000 neighborhoods. The number of violent shootings and killings and murders is still high as shit it doesn't matter 
where you spread it out. If you took that number and spread it out over the entire state of Illinois, it'd still be high. Yes? Spread it over three states and that would still be high. Matter of fact, let's, let's go a little bit further. Let's say if you spread it among Michigan, spread it among Ohio, spread it among Illinois. I don't know, y'all pick a couple more states. Spread it across five different, five different states and the number would still be high as shit. But we're worried about all these different stupid things that don't mean anything. We want to get mad. We want to get mad about these police shootings, police brutality. I'm sorry. I think, and, and maybe some people ain't going to take well to this. But you know what? I think that we could actually ignore some of the police violence, some of the police murders, some of the unjust murders. We can, you know what? We could turn a blind eye to some of that. We really could. If you could take every Alton Sterling, or if you could take every Rashad Brooks story, or if you could take every George Floyd and just ignore them, just ignore those stories. Let's not have national outrage. Let's not build statues. Let's not build murals. Let's just ignore those stories and act like they didn't even happen. I would rather take that and trade it and put importance on our babies. I know there's some people out there that are not gonna understand what I just said. They're just gonna be like, oh my God, I just peed in my panties. <laughs> I know somebody out there like, you know what, Jay, I just pissed my boxers with what you just said. I'm so outraged and I think you need to be, you know, I think you need to be off the internet or we, we need to beat you up and we need to commit violence on you for saying what you just said. We could, thank you. Somebody in the, in the chat is actually clapping. Sit the virtual clapping. I appreciate that. If we believe that babies' lives matter, if our children are the future, if we need to teach them the way, we need to protect them, provide for them, make sure that they are nourished, protected, so they can grow up and become something great. All of this vitriol and all of this attention that we're paying to people who already had a chance to live their life, maybe not long lives, but you're talking about most of those deaths between Dante Wright, Ahmaud Arbery, Alton Sterling, Walter L. Scott, Rashard Brooks, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Stephon Clark were grown people. They were adults. Am I right or am I wrong? But let's talk about these babies. Can we talk about these babies for a moment? One of them, her name is Serenity Broughton. And her six-year-old sister, Aubrey. Serenity and Aubrey Broughton. These are my babies right here, not mine, but I, uh, these are my babies that I'm going to speak for tonight. We could take those other names and throw them out the window and let's get mad about what happened to them. Let me tell you their story. A seven year old girl was killed. Obviously the taller one, the taller, the taller girl with the brighter complexion. She was killed and her little sister was shot and they're left fighting. And her little sister is left fighting for her life after these girls were shot in Chicago. I guess it only happened in the bad neighborhood. So I, so I guess all of Chicago isn't bad, huh? Two of the least 47 victims of thugs with gun violence. I'm a t I am told you I'm gonna start changing that term. It ain't gun violence. Guns don't do anything. Guns are inanimate objects until somebody picks up a gun and does something with it. Can we as society, y'all hear what I'm saying? T with Mocha, all of my ladies, all of my gentlemen out there. Can we change that terminology in America? It's stupid. If you want to talk about conspiracies, then maybe we could talk about a conspiracy in the media that they keep giving us terminology to make us ignore the fact that we got so many black people being shot down by each other. Yes, one of those terms being gun violence. 
Guns have never done a damn thing to anybody. They have never loaded up. They have never loaded up bullets inside of the magazines, popped themselves into the butt of the gun and walked outside, took the safety off and just started blasting on people. Last time I checked, that's never happened. We want to make it seem like the law abiding citizens need to have stronger laws against them, especially in Chicago that has the strongest gun laws in the United States of America. We need to strengthen the gun laws. No, that's not what you need at all. You need to get rid of thugs. You need to get rid of the criminals. Get rid of the criminal element. Get rid of the criminal mentality. You need to breed it out. Everybody understand? And you'd have to ask yourself, well, how do you breed it out? It's very simple. My solutions are very simple. Number one, don't have children in war zones. How about that? If bullets are flying by your head, why are you thinking about getting some sex? Why are you thinking about dick when they out blasting guns? Why are you out thinking about pussy when they out blasting guns? Yes? If I, if I heard an AK-47, a, a machine gun or or, or Draco, or whatever the hell it is that you want to call it outside my window, the last thing I'm going to be thinking about doing is getting some ass. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Very simple place to start. Stop having babies in war zones. Start having marriages. Stop producing children outside of marriage. Just those two things alone could drastically change this war that we're in. It is a social construct war and we believe that we can continue to raise kids like this and we can't. These kids don't have any guidance. They don't have any leadership. They don't have any protection because their fathers are all over the goddamn place. Their fathers are everywhere and nowhere. Y'all catch that? Their fathers are everywhere. Any man that walks up in the house and wants to, wants to deal with mom and be in a relationship with mom, and then they're nowhere because the biological fathers, the DNA tie biological father is nowhere to be found. We, all we have to do is set standards and ask that if I'm gonna create a kid by you, you're gonna have to create a marriage with me. And if you're not gonna create a marriage with me, then we ain't gonna have no kids. It's just a start. That's all I'm saying. It's not a guarantee. It's a start. It's a start. It's a start. I hope everybody caught that. Let's move on with these baby story. The girls were identified as Serenity Broughton, which is spelled B-R-O-U-G-H-H, excuse me, B-R-O-U-G-H-T-O-N, seven years old. Of course, that's the, uh, the taller baby right there. And her six-year-old sister, whose name is Aubrey. And they were struck Sunday as their mother put them in the backseat of a car in a gang conflict area. In the city's Belmont Central Station uh, section, Central, uh, excuse me, Chief of Patrol. That's a ooh, tongue twister. Chief of Patrol Brian McDermott told reporters, according to the news, as bullets flew and chaos reigned around them, the terrified girls clutched to each other. Their grandmother, Regina Broughton, told the news. They were hugging, the grandma said of the girls, when they were separated and pulled apart, there was blood on both of them. That's gotta be the scariest thing ever. Serenity's injury was actually fatal. Oh my goodness. The bullet pierced her heart. She didn't have a chance to survive at all. Now the family is trying to figure out how to tell Aubrey that her beloved big sister who she nicknamed Honey, is dead. And I love that. She nicknamed her Honey. That's a beautiful thing. And y'all could tell that not only those girls might have had different fathers, it happens a lot in the black community. But one thing that you know when you look at these girls, let me see if I can get another photo of them back up here. Y'all can tell that they loved each other. I'm not going to lie. If I could be honest with y'all just for a moment. 
my relationship with my brother and sister was never really that great. And I just think that, you know, we just, we needed some space from each other that we just never really could get. So our relationship got better over time, but I always envied this, I always envied this. I wish that growing up, we could have been this close between my brother and my sister growing up to just love your sibling like that. That's a beautiful thing. Now the family is trying to figure out how to tell her that her big sister is gone. Aubrey asked me today, where is she and why hasn't she come to see her? Where is honey? Said the grandma. Investigators don't believe that the girls or their mother were the intended targets. Well, of course not. Because people in Chicago that do all of these shootings, apparently their aim is not so good because they be hitting 30, 40, 50 people at a time and not even and missing their targets, but they hit all these unintended targets, right? Real, real, real irresponsible. To say that I'm sad and outraged would be an understatement according to McDermott. I can only hope that every resident of this city is angry, saddened, and outraged as I am at this time. Too many young people have lost their lives to senseless thugs with gun violence in the city of Chicago. I'm gonna continue to change that term. Thugs with gun violence. Can y'all type that in the chat for me? Thugs with gun violence. Thugs with gun violence. Appreciate that. Thugs with gun violence. McDermott pleaded with residents to tell detectives what they may know about the shooting that killed these girls, or excuse me, that killed Serenity. Let's put some respect on her name. That killed Serenity, who was hit in her chest and torso, and her sister Aubrey was left seriously wounded after being struck in the chest and armpit. The young girls were among 47 people citywide. And I want to point the fact out that they said citywide and they didn't say in a certain neighborhood or a certain area. It says citywide from Friday afternoon through Sunday afternoon, including five who were killed. I don't, I don't even understand how there can be any more gang members as much as they kill each other. Think about this. They're killing this many people every single weekend. When y'all know it takes nine months to create a life for the mother to give birth, then I'm assuming by the time you probably start busting guns in, in, in the bad areas of Chicago, it's probably like around what, 12 or 13 maybe? Let's just say 10 years old. Let's just put it on a small scale. Let's just say 10 years old. That would still take you 19 months to produce a whole slew of thugs with guns. And they're killing each other by the hour, by the minute, by the second, every weekend, every holiday. Just burial, 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 burial. Like you can't, like you can't even have sex with that many people. You think they all be gone by now. That's a crazy thing. More than 200, here's, here's the, the uh, statistic. More than 250 children, 250 children have been shot in Chicago so far this year, including 32 fatally. And that's just the children. If that number were 250 children spread out, matter of fact, let's just not even say the United States, even across the world, that would still be a lot of children being shot and murdered by thugs with guns for no reason. 
let alone in the United States, let alone in the north of the United States, let alone in an entire freaking state, let alone in an entire city, let alone in certain bad neighborhoods. Jesus Christ. Community activist Andrew Holmes is offering a $2,000 reward for information leading to a break in the sister's shooting, according to the Sun Times. But I can guarantee y'all that's not going to happen because I think the number of crimes that go unsolved in Chicago was like, what, 70 to 80 percent go unsolved? It's pretty high. They won't find the killers. They won't find the shooters of these two girls because I guess they weren't they weren't adults that were shot by by white police. So I guess it doesn't matter. I guess their lives, these black queens, I guess black princesses who would have grown up to be black queens, I guess their lives didn't matter, I guess. They said it's not about the money. It's just about catching these individuals before they strike and hit another child. Stop killing our children, according to Holmes. Aubrey Broughton, who was the little one, Aubrey moved was excuse me was moved out of an intensive care unit at the hospital in may in maywood late sunday but she has a pierced lung that baby is fighting for her life her sister serenity would have turned eight years old in november regina broughton who i think is the grandmother told the station that aubrey has been consoling their mother over the shooting she keeps saying, it's not your fault, mommy. It's not your fault. Wow. She said, I am lost. I mean, they were my life. They're my everything. How do you prepare yourself for something like this? According to Regina Broughton. Someone should come forth and help the family and us because it didn't have to happen to her. She said of serenity. It shouldn't have happened to her. She was innocent. But here's the cold part. It shouldn't be happening at all. But since it is happening, since people don't want to move out of Chicago, then why don't you do this simple thing? Apparently it's not okay for me to give solutions to problems. And a huge problem that I have is for people to continue to open GoFundMe accounts rather than open up life insurance accounts. GoFundMe should be used for life and not for death. I want you guys to take a look at this before I show you guys the news videos. And I wanna just see if you guys can see, I don't know if y'all can see that, if I need to highlight it. Can y'all see how much they're asking for in that, in that GoFundMe? Can anybody see that? If you can, I want you to type it, type that number in the chat, please. Let me break out my trusty whiteboard real quick. Let me break that out. See if I can highlight this for you guys. And uh, I'm going to use green. I haven't used green in a long time. Right here. Let me put the uh, arrow. One, two. That's a pretty good arrow. Can y'all see that number right there? I tried to tell you guys, I tried to told you, I tried to told you, did I not? Y'all see why I have the Babies for Benefits t-shirt on? There is a woman here by the name of, uh, let me see, Alicia, T-O-L-E-F-R-E-E, -E -E, toll free. Put up this GoFundMe three days ago and she's asking for $100,000. She's asking this for burial expenses and also for medical bills for this little girl, Aubrey. But just like I told you guys before, I want you to remember this. They haven't even got the medical bills yet. They can y'all can y'all can y'all say that in the chat? They have not 
gotten the medical bill yet? Why would you not wait to see what the medical bill is going to be before you put up a high inordinate number asking for these benevolent white people to donate to your GoFundMes? Oh, they couldn't wait. Oh, they could not wait to put up this damn go a hundred thousand. Next time you know, next weekend or the weekend after or the next holiday when this happens to some more little girls or some more little boys, you're gonna see GoFundMe's three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. Why not go for a cool million? Since people gonna donate, since people gonna send it anyway. Yes, we, we want to give my baby the best funeral. So we want to give my baby a $2 million funeral. But you wouldn't even give your baby a a $100,000 life. But you want to give her a $100,000 death? Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't want to give your children a $100,000 life. But you want to give them a $100,000 death. We won't invest that in our children's future. We won't invest that in the schools. We won't invest that in the books. We won't invest that in their clothes. We won't invest that in their pencils, pen, paper, technology. We won't even take that, that $100,000 and get the asbestos out of the installation. Insulation, insulation. We won't fix potholes. We won't make sure that children don't live with rats and roaches in the house. We won't, we won't, we won't do that. We won't keep our grass cut. We won't get these children who might need some extra tutoring, some special after school help. We won't put this into a college fund. Instead of these kids having to beg and borrow by the time they turn 15 and 16, we won't even put this money towards them having their first car when they get their driver's license. But we want to put this into a burial. Where's the logic in that? Let me give you guys the fair usage and we'll continue to let people make excuses for what's going on. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Here we go. Let's get it. Community leaders rallied tonight on the northwest side after a double shooting left a seven-year-old girl dead and her six-year-old sister in the hospital. The girls were shot while in a car on West Grand yesterday at three in the afternoon when someone in a black SUV began shooting. Community activist Andrew Holmes tonight begging the community to help turn in the shooter and the outrage was palpable. She should have been getting ready for school. Getting ready to go to school. I forgot that they are school age girls. Oh my goodness. First week of school. Think about that. First week of school. You cut our future short. We need the identity of the individual that was driving that car. It's a crisis. We have to come here, balloons, candles for our children. It's just like a Vietnam War or over in Afghanistan where they're constantly, constantly shooting, constantly, constantly hurting and, and hunting our children. For what? These hoodlum punks have no regard for human life. And I dare say, not even their own. We turn on the television and all we hear is there's been a shooting over here and a shooting over there. The Northwest Side was always like a distance from all this shooting. And, and, and well, it's not going to get to us. Well, it's here. Children are getting shot in the city. These detectives, it kills them when they see stuff like this. We got to give them the tools. 
the tools to go after these individuals. We haven't. We haven't given the tools. There's no fear here. There's no fear with these gangbangers and, the, and these shooters. We Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Let me, let me, let, I want to hear him say that again. Listen to this again. When they see stuff like this, we got to give them the tools, the tools to go after these individuals. One of those tools could have been, y'all remember when Trump wanted to send the feds in there and they said, no, we don't want the feds in. Would that not have been a tool? Maybe I don't think it would have been the correct tool, but it would have been a tool. But what you do, you continue to say no to this, no to that. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do stop and frisk. We don't want to do any of these things. But then when you have no solutions on the table, this is what happens. They have no fear, just like he said. Let me let him say it again. We haven't. We haven't given the tools. There's no fear here. There's no fear with these gangbangers and, the, and these shooters. We have to give them hard laws, laws that are, they're scared of. The reward for information leading to an arrest has now reached $5,000. Good evening, everybody. My name is Brian McDermott. I'm the chief of patrol for Chicago Police Department. At this time, thank you. Don't defund the police, refund the police. <laughs> thank you, Josh. I agree. I like that. Don't defund, refund. I like to offer hundred thousand dollar GoFundMe. Yep, you heard it. Yep. For my sincere condolences to the family of these two precious young girls, one of which who lost her life, the other one who was fighting for her life at this time at Loyola Hospital. To say that I am sad and outraged would be an understatement. I can only hope that every resident of this city is as angry, saddened, and outraged as I, as I am at this, at this time. So too many young people have lost their lives to senseless gun violence in the city of Chicago. At this time, I would like to ask for the community support in helping us solve this crime. I know that there's people out there somewhere that saw something that could help us solve this crime. Anybody who saw anything can go anonymously to cpdtip.com or can contact Area 5 detectives. We owe it to the families to bring these violent offenders who have no respect for human life to justice. On today's date at 2.50 p.m., there's a shot spotter hitting the 6200 block of West Grand. Responding officers arrived, found two young victims ages six and seven with multiple gunshot wounds to the body. The responding officers rendered aid while waiting arrival of the Chicago Fire Department. So no CFD life. arrived, transported our two victims to Loyola Hospital. The year old succumbed to her injuries and the six-year-old is fighting for her life at this time. Area 5 detectives are still on the scene, interviewing witnesses, canvassing the area for anybody who saw anything, attempting to locate any private video and recovering any and all evidence on the scene. Because this is still in the uh, preliminary and in the early stages of this investigation, there's not, not a lot of information that I can release at this time. And again, I'm asking members of the public that saw anything to please go to cpdtip.com or to contact Area 5 detectives. With that, I'll open it up for a couple of questions. Can we confirm if you were sisters? Yes, they were sisters. Uh, we don't believe that they were the intended target and the mother was putting the two children in the back seat of the car. Were there other bullets or shell casings found in the area? E R E N I T Y. Okay. And then just your sexual granddaughter's name is Kirsten. Aubrey A U B R E Y. Same last name, right? Broughton B R O U G H T O N. What's on my mind right now is that such a big weight to put on a little child to take for such meanness. I mean, she was getting in a car coming from her grandma's house and her life was ended at that moment. I mean, that's just senseless. And 
you know, someone should come forth and say something. Someone should come forth and help the family because, and help us because this didn't have to happen to her. It shouldn't have happened to her. She was innocent. She's seven. She, her birthday was coming up in November. This is too big of a wait for a child. This senseless violence has to stop. This is, it's not right. She was a beautiful light and just take it for nothing, random. She was coming from her her maternal grandmother's house, from my, my, my son's mother-in-law's house, and getting into the car after picking up some packages. And we were supposed to fly out Tuesday to South Carolina for, for a couple days, just so they can see Myrtle Beach, just a couple days away. She had dreams of just going to the airport. She just wanted to see the airport, wanted to go up on the plane. And I had arranged that for her. And didn't even get to see it. Her first plane ride. ride. It would have been her first absolute plane ride. Her and her little sister, who was injured as well. Her little sister's now battling, and fighting, and struggling to heal and get better. Does Aubrey know what's going on? She is not aware of her big sister going. No, she's aware that she has been been hurt, and she keeps saying it. It's not no. It's not your fault, mommy. It's not your fault. To her mom, I'm, it's okay. It's not your fault, mommy. And to hear that as a grandma, I don't know what I'm lost. I'm lost because I'm lost. I mean, they were my life, my everything. I, I, how do you, how do you prepare yourself for something like this? She's a beautiful child. She was a beautiful child. Her spirit was beautiful, innocent. Everything about her was innocent. Does your daughter-in-law have any sense about why this happened to them? Will you say they don't believe that your family was being targeted? Did anyone look familiar to your, your daughter-in-law? No, they didn't even see it. My daughter-in-law was loading into the car, and she did not even see anything. She heard what she thought was fireworks. And at that point, she, uh, her, her, the little youngest one was holding herself and, and had a and fell on the seat. The other sister was already in her car seat, buttoned up, and my son said he grabbed her. And she was just lifeless and limp. Someone is out there tonight, uh, police are looking for, that killed your granddaughter. That person sees you talking tonight. What do you want that person to know about what they've done to your family? Come forth and take responsibility. Whoever sees this, turn them in. It was a child. She didn't deserve this. If you have any kind of heart, step forward. Do what you're supposed to do. And do what decent human being should do. I mean, all this gun violence, there are somebody innocents that are constantly getting hurt. You should not. Thugs with gun violence, not gun violence. Thugs with gun violence. I, I mean, it's too much. It's too much. What should people remember about Serenity? That she was a beautiful spirit. She didn't deserve this. She was an innocent child. On coming from church. Her, her name means. She's she's out of yes she's out of intensive and up to the pre, pre uh, the pediatrician pediatric unit now and where they're but she does have a a drainage tube in her lung they had to expand her lung because the bullet pierced a place and that was it came straight through the side and out of her chest and pierced her lung. Well, well, she's in some. She's in a great deal of pain, and she's expressing that pain. They don't want to put her out where she can't talk or express. I'm not sure which grandmother this is, but this is definitely. I think this is uh, one of the family members, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, but they're keeping her awake, but heavily sedated. Is there anything we haven't asked you that you want to make sure it's said? No, that I would be really grateful if someone would come forth. We don't know anything, but I'm hoping that the police will be expeditious about trying to find something at least, or someone will come forth. We are looking for the public and the civil per people to come forward at this particular time and help us out because the police can't be everywhere and not enough information. 
someone knows who did this. Someone was in the car. Someone was with the person that did it. Totally agree. Now, somebody in the chat asked, did they shoot these children on purpose? The answer is yes. Because the way that it works, I don't know about the rest of y'all states, but in Texas and Oklahoma, if you take your weapon and you discharge it and it hits someone, you could do prison time and a lot of it because you are held accountable for every bullet, every round that leaves your tool, that leaves your weapon. So if it hits someone, injures someone, kills someone, hits their property or anything like that, you are held accountable. So it's just the same as if you did it on purpose when you pull your weapon and you shoot. If you ain't got no aim, then you hit what you hit and guess you did it on purpose. Your intent was to hit something. So yes, they shot these girls on purpose. Thank you. Well, that's what they're suspecting from the details. My they shot these girls on purpose because they don't believe that black lives matter. They don't believe that little girls matter. They don't believe that babies' lives matter. That's why they shot him. Son said that he heard the pops. And Doesn't he matter. Back. He has no enemies. My son is, goes to work and goes home. It's, his family was his life. So your son was with your daughter-in-law? Yes. He was on the driver's side coming out of the house and then the, the wife was in the car with the kids buckling them in. When the shots uh, flew out, she had just got done buckling in Aubrey when the shots flew out and they came through the side of the doors. He has his car is riveted with bullets on the side, like six to seven shots entered the car. They, um, they ride with I'm not aware of that wasn't some questions that I asked him. I don't know that detail. Thank you. Thank you. We start with our developing story. Two sisters shot right in front of their mother. One did not survive. It happened as the girls were sitting in a parked car on Chicago's northwest side. New tonight, CBS 2 Stephen Graves just spoke to their grandmother. Stephen, she is making a plea. He is at Loyola Hospital, Stephen. Yeah, Jim, those two girls, just six and seven years old, were rushed right here to be treated after being shot in the Belmont Central neighborhood. Miraculously, one of those girls is recovering. As like you said, their grandma telling me she just wants someone to talk. Tonight, family giving CBS2 this photo of Serenity brought into the left, her younger sister Aubrey on the right. Both shot in a car this afternoon, leaving their grandmother's home, both headed to see their... The older girl, the taller girl is seven. The younger baby, Aubrey, is six. So seven years old and six years old. Brother grandma, Regina Broughton, who instead had to rush to the hospital, finding out Serenity did not make it. It shouldn't have happened to her. She was innocent. She's seven. She, her birthday was coming up in November. Chicago so police say it happened at Grand and Merrimack around three this afternoon. That's when someone shot the two sisters multiple times. Their mom was loading them into their father's car. And she heard what she thought was fireworks. And at that point, she, uh, her, her, the little youngest one was holding herself and, and, had a, uh, and fell on the seat. The other sister was already in her car seat, buttoned up. And my son said he grabbed her and she was just lifeless. Aubrey shot in the upper body has a pierced lung but is now out of intensive care and talking. She's aware that she has been been hurt and she keeps saying it. It's not no it's not your fault mommy. It's not your fault. The heart-wrenching words coming as police investigate asking the public for help to find the shooter or shooters. All family knows is that someone possibly drove up and fired those shots. The two girls, his mother and father, both witnessing it, but police saying the mom and kids were not the target. Now a family forced to mourn the death of an innocent girl who was just about to take her first plane ride to Myrtle Beach in days. Someone should come forth and say something. Someone should come forth and help the family because, and help us because this didn't have to happen to her. It shouldn't have happened to her. She was innocent.
This morning, a six year old girl is recovering at the hospital after a shooting yesterday on Chicago's northwest side. Her older sister did not survive the shooting. CBS 2's Mugo Digwe live at the Loyola University Medical Center with the latest on this shooting investigation and Aubrey's condition. Mugo? Yeah, good morning. So those two sisters, they were brought here for treatment. As you mentioned, one is six years old. She just got out of the ICU, but then her older sister, just seven years old, she died at this hospital. Right now, we want to show you a picture of those two girls. The seven-year-old is named Serenity. She's on the left. Her six-year-old sister, Aubrey, is on the right. According to Chicago police, the shooting happened around three yesterday afternoon at Grand and Merrimack in Belmont Central. The girls were on their way to see their grandmother. Mom was loading them into their father's car when someone started shooting. Now, when police arrived, they found both girls inside the car with multiple gunshot wounds. Serenity was shot in the chest and torso. Her little sister, Aubrey, was shot in the chest and arm. The grandmother they were going to see in the first place had to rush to the hospital to see them, only to learn that Serenity didn't make it. It shouldn't have happened to her. She was innocent. She's seven. She, her birthday was coming up in November. So the six-year-old Aubrey, she has a pierced lung, but we're told she is now out of the ICU. Police say that both the girls and their mom were not the intended target in the shooting, but they are asking for any information, no matter how small, about who shot those girls. And of course, remember, you can always stay anonymous. We're live in Maywood, Mugodigwe, CBS. And you know what's funny? They keep saying that the girls weren't the intended targets, but they were hit multiple times. You got to say that to yourself about 10 times in your head. Say the girls were not the intended targets, but they were shot multiple times. The girls were not the intended targets, but they were shot multiple times. Hmm. Really? They weren't the intended targets, but they got shot multiple times. And this type of thing happens all the time. And I think what makes it even more egregious and when people talk about, you know, they weren't the intended target. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Is when you pull your weapon out and you start shooting the fact that you not only hit two children, but you wounded. How many they say? Let me pull my article back up. 40 other people. So who was your target then? If they shot 40 other people over the weekend, then who were the targets? Or was it just a lot of bad shooting? Yes, these girls were the intended targets because thugs with guns committing all of this gun violence don't believe that children's lives matter. And because these little girls' lives didn't matter to those thugs that shot and killed, killed the big girl and then almost killed the little baby girl, Their lives didn't matter to them. And on top of that, somebody trying to capitalize off of their death and their injuries by putting up this big, huge, inordinate GoFundMe of $100,000. Come on, y'all. Come on. I know I got some people out there that's constantly talking about that I don't know what I'm talking about. Come on. Come on. Seriously. Somebody explain this $100,000 GoFundMe, please. $100,000 before you even know what the final medical costs are going to be. And usually with most victims, especially children who are, who are victims of crimes like this, they're, they're already going to be taken care of by the state. The state is going to take care of the burial fund to bury these babies, $100,000. That doesn't even sound reasonable. That sounds like a come up from whoever put up the damn GoFundMe. I don't like anything about this, but you know what? I could do stories like this each and every weekend and I don't think anybody would care. You notice there are no protests, there's no outrage. There are no, there, there are no there's nobody out there burning up a Wendy's. There's nobody out there, you know, barricading the streets and blocking off the streets. 
Nobody with t-shirts. Nobody with candles. No marches. No laws being changed. Nothing's going to change. Nobody's going to move. Everybody's going to continue to keep doing what they're doing, which is why you're going to continue to keep getting the same result that you're getting. And at this point, all we can do is just kick back and watch the carnage. It sucks because I don't think that people are ready to change. Not yet. But I thought I'd throw that out there. That's my personal opinion about these stories because I really wish this would stop. And I really wish these babies' lives would have mattered more than what these people showed. These girls can't speak for themselves, nor were they able to defend themselves. So to baby Serenity, young princess, RIP, she could have grown up to become anything. To baby Aubrey, we hope that she makes a full recovery and we hope that baby Aubrey gets moved out of Chicago, not just out of the bad area. Get her out of the state. Get her out of that half of the country. Move her someplace else where she actually stands a chance. Maybe even around people that don't look like her because it seems like those areas are generally a little bit safer. <laughs> it's a damn shame that we gotta say that, but it's the truth. Don't get mad at the truth. Get mad at the people who continue to use these babies for the benefits that they can collect from them. We call that hashtag babies for benefits. I wish these girls' lives would have mattered more. But from my heart to yours, I thank you all for those who understand and listen with an open mind and an open heart to this story. Thank you.